Welcome back, my friends. So today we've got another PlayStation Classic video for you, highlighting a brand new build from Magnus RC. This is a 32 gigabyte standalone Retroboot build based off of Retroboot 1.1 featuring emulation station. So I just popped this build on my USB drive, threw it on my PlayStation Classic, turned it on, and this is what I'm greeted to. I think this is really awesome. So Emulation Station is going to be very familiar for a lot of us, uh, especially those who are into RetroPie. And I think this is really neat. You can, you know, if you have an additional USB drive, you could throw this on there, have it as like a separate setup. That's the cool thing with the PlayStation Classic using like AutoBleam and like stuff like this with the RetroBoot standalone build is there's just so many options. But I want to go through, show you all the systems that are included on this and take a look at some of the games as well, test it out, show you what you're getting yourself into. There are 26 systems, thousands of games. The default theme here is Retro Rama from Phil's Doodles. I cannot speak highly enough of this guy. Phil's Doodles does amazing work. All of these splash screens, all hand drawn by him. You should be familiar with his artwork. He did do all my channel art for my YouTube channel. A very amazing guy. Like I said, can't speak highly enough of him, but Let's go ahead and go on forward, looking through the systems here. We do have other options for themes as well. I'll showcase that in a moment. We have Atari 2600, 561 games. Atari 5200, 96 games. Atari 7800, 60 games. On the bottom right is where it tells you how many games are included for a system. And then like on the bottom left to the middle tells you what the uh, you know different options are. You just kind of got to get accustomed to that with... Uh, you know, the PlayStation controller. Atari Lynx, 83 games. Push your mind to the edge. Atari Lynx, so many awesome games on that console. ColecoVision, 155. Game Gear, 313. Whoa, color. <laughs> Game Boy, it's portable. It's stereo, 680. Game Boy Advance, 1062. And let me show you real quick the, the way this theme looks when you go into the game select. Everything, it'll have the icons for the system give you information, metadata for the games, a little splash screen for everything. Very nicely done. I really dig the way this looks. Game Boy Color, Thumb Magnet, get into it. 605 games, a lot of cool games for the, the Game Boy Color. Sega Genesis, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. I always like this, uh, this artwork right here. 937 games. Television, 168. Sega Master System, now there are no limits, 358. Like, just look at this artwork. This is beautiful stuff, in my opinion. Neo Geo, the future is now 146. So pretty much it's the entire U.S. library. Nintendo Entertainment System, 1,332. I would imagine with 1,332 that we would have some, yeah, we have some like Famicom games and whatnot in here. I was going to say, that sounds a little high. But yeah, we got some Famicom stuff in here as well. So that's cool. <laughs> the Night of the Horrible Nintendo Clones. This is really a really cool artwork as well. I know Phil's Doodles does a lot of these uh, artworks for like t-shirts and whatnot. I'll find his link, put it in the description if you want to check that out. I have a few of his t-shirts. Like these designs are just really awesome. 107 games available. Uh, I know Magnus RC loves putting these uh, homebrews and hacks on his builds. So we have a ton of cool stuff here, like D-Pad Hero, uh, Deadpool, just tons of tons of neat stuff. Different Castlevania hacks, like Chuck Norris and Double Dragon, <laughs> Flappy Bird. <laughs> you could just like get sucked into these homebrews and hacks. There's a lot of crazy stuff there. Uh, Nintendo 64, we got 16 games. Just a nice little selection. We'll test one of these out in a moment, see how it runs. The, the PlayStation Classics are very... Uh, you know, capable system here. 194 games for PC Engine. I think this one, the um, the font in the background, it's it, it's neat, but the font's like a little a little hard for my old man eyes to read. But you, you kind of get the point. They're Japanese games. You go through here looking looking at these PC Engine games. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff. PC Engine CD, 30 games. A lot of interesting stuff there as well. Super Nintendo, the best play here, 1,045. So I would imagine some Super Famicom stuff as well on this. There's, There's got to be. Yeah, there is. I mean, you can't beat Super Nintendo. There's so much awesomeness there. Super Graphics, only five games. That's all that was released for this console. But there's some neat stuff there. 
TurboGrafx-16, are you one of us? 93 games. The, the full U.S. library there. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get as many games in the U.S. as they did in Japan for the PC Engine. 24 games for the TurboGrafx CD. Some interesting stuff here. Oh, Buster Bros. Buster Bros is a cool one. I remember playing that quite a bit in the arcade. I think the TurboGrafx CD port is kind of wonky a little bit, if I remember correctly. Uh, Vectrix, 33 games bring real arcade play home. It's always neat to see Vectrix emulated. Final Burn Alpha, 609 games. So you're going to have a lot of CPS stuff in here. Uh, a lot of other games that run on Final Burn Alpha. A lot of really interesting things. And then we do have MAME as well, 1,375. You, know, you get your typical uh, set of games here. And then to ports, 17 games and ports. So a lot of stuff you can mess around with. Uh, drastic, you know, some DS games. DS runs fantastically well on the PlayStation Classic. Open bore, really neat stuff here. And then right back to Atari. So... Let's go ahead and test a few things out. Final Burn Alpha, screw it. Let's uh, let's try Street Fighter Zero Three. So testing these games out, uh, they all have bezels. Each system has different bezels. Some games do have scanline filters on. That's okay. Uh, you know, you could turn them off by going in the retro arc by hitting select and start. You can turn them on if you so choose. Change the bezels out. Uh, all that good stuff. But yeah, really cool to have a bunch of arcade games on a setup like this and these are all running very smooth um, from what I've tested so far uh, so definitely uh, a lot of fun here I, I can't really play these fighters without a six button controller or an arcade stick I know some people are cool with the uh, PlayStation controller for for these types of games but me oh man it's a, it's a it's a little difficult a little difficult I always had a hard time with the uh, triggers or the shoulder buttons being used in fighters but that's just me so there we go pretty cool stuff so taking a look at Nintendo 64, for my testing, Nintendo 64 performs decently well on the PlayStation Classic. The only issue is with the stock controller. Very difficult to play these games. You do need to use something else, preferably with like an analog stick or whatever, get that stuff set up. With the stock controller, sure, you can get a little creative, change the, the button configs around a bit. But for me, ultimately, it's just not playable with the stock controller. Uh, but these games do run decently well, so wanted to point that out. So let's test a couple other things out real quick. Neo Geo, why not? So the one nice thing, I'm already by Samurai Showdown, but if you hit select, uh, you can go to the options, sort, you know, how you want to sort or jump to a different letter, especially that works out nicely when you have a ton of games in the list, so you can quickly jump to them. But here's Samurai Showdown 2. Nice little bezel there. I think that looks really good with uh, the Neo Geo here. But there we go. Neo Geo Samurai Showdown 2. One of my all-time favorites. I think this bezel looks really nice. You do have options that you can mess around with, like I said, if you want to change this stuff out. Oh, first fight against uh, Cham Cham. She is freaking a beast. It's always uh, these smaller characters in this game, like Cham Cham and Nicotine. Holy crap. So hard to hit. Oh. Stupid monkey. Oh, shit. No. What? <laughs> she, broke my, she broke my weapon. Damn it. Well, there's that. Looking great. Plays awesomely well. So moving on, I wanted to showcase this game real quick. Just test out a Game Gear game. I love this bezel, but this is Samurai Showdown. Moving from Samurai Showdown 2 to Samurai Showdown 1 on the Game Gear. This game brings back memories for me. I had it on the Game Gear back in the day. I also had it on the Game Boy, but playing it in color on the Game Gear, that was kind of magical. But this does bring back memories because I had a uh, Asian market that was just down the street from me when I was growing up, uh, maybe a block or two away, and they had an MVS unit. And I remember being on uh, road trips playing this, you know, on the Game Gear and being like, this is cool, but I really want to play the real version. And at that Asian market in that MVS unit, I believe it was a two slot. They had Samurai Showdown 1, and then they eventually had Samurai Showdown 2 when it came out. And they had like Puzzle Bobble. Uh, you know, they rotated the games every once in a while. But yeah, I just remember playing this and just like really yearning to play the real deal game because this was very sluggish. And yeah, it's it's... 
an okay port for a handheld, but man. Yeah, I just wanted to show this. If you never knew there was Samurai Showdown on the Game Gear, essentially a portable Sega Master System, there you go. So that was the Retroboot 32 gigabyte build. On this main screen, if you press start, um, you do have like sound options, UI options, stuff like that, that you can mess with. I really wouldn't play with too much here, but UI settings, if you select that and then go down to theme set, you can change it uh, between a few different ones. It looks like uh, Dwayne Hurst, uh, some of his themes are on here, so you can change them out if you so choose. I like Retrorama. I love Dwayne Hurst as well, but we do have a few options here. You just select it and then exit out, and it will load up. It does take a second, though, so be patient. But there's uh, Super Sweet. This one's a really cool one, too. So there's a few different styles of themes here for you to select from, but... There you go. I'm really digging this build. I think it is really awesome to have these options for the PlayStation Classic. I know Magnus has hinted to me that he's working on another build, uh, an AutoBleam 0.9 build with Retroboot. So he'll probably have a lot of this stuff integrated in that as well. So looking forward to checking that one out. I'll share that with you guys once I get my hands on it. Uh, for more information on PlayStation Classic hacking, people are always asking, join my Facebook group join my discord links are in the description so appreciate you guys hanging out with me just wanted to showcase this see how some things work and with that said i will catch you guys next time peace out bye bye and boom